The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. <laughs> Well, it's a wintry afternoon in the little town of Melrose Springs, the kind of a day when it's pleasant to bask in the warmth and comfort of home. And that's where we find Honest Harold in a nostalgic mood as he's looking through his high school annual. Well, this annual sure brings back old times. Melrose Springs High, class of 27. <laughs> Yeah, here's a picture of the camera club taken on the front steps of the school. And who's this little kid on the end with a pompadour? Looks like a frightened porcupine. <laughs> Whoop, that's me. What are you doing, Harold? Oh, uh, hello, Mother. I'm just looking at my picture here in the high school annual. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yes. Why, Harold, you haven't changed a bit. Zeef. You were the handsomest boy in your class Oh, well, thank you, Mother Glad you think so <laughs> I'll never forget graduation night hmm? I was so proud when you sang the class song Farewell, Melrose High Oh, yeah, that's right I wrote that, too Let's see, how did it go? Um, <clears throat> Farewell to thee, O Melrose High the time has come to say goodbye. Farewell to our principal, Sophie Turner. We'll miss the classrooms and Bunsen Burner. <laughs> yes, Harold. When you sang that, there wasn't a dry eye in the audience. It got me too, Mother. I had a soggy necktie the rest of the evening. <laughs> oh, here's the class prophecy. Yeah. Let's see what it says about you, Harold. Yeah, let's see. Harrison, Hartzell, Hemp. Yeah, here I am. Some night in 1935, we'll tune our radios to the big city just to hear that famous singing star, Harold Hemp. Well, that prophecy sure didn't come true, Mother. Well, you could have gone to New York and been a big success if you wanted to, Harold. Well. But I'm sure you're much happier right here with your old friends, all the people you grew up with. Yeah, guess you're right, Mother. Anyway, look at Marvin Hartsock. He's the fellow that went to New York, the only one. Nobody's ever heard of him since. Poor Marvin. Probably got some terrible job back there, like pie checker at the automat. <laughs> He should have stayed right here, Harold. Why, he might have become almost as big a success as you. Uh, I'm not so much, Mother. Just a crooner on a small radio station. Oh, you have a beautiful voice, Harold. Why, if you wanted to, you could have Bing Crosby worried about his job. Well, I wouldn't want to do that, Mother. Bing has a big family and he needs the money. <laughs> Of the night meets the goal of the day. Yeah, mother's right. I was smart to stay in Melrose Springs. After all, I'm a big success here. Everybody in town knows me. Good morning, Mrs. Proudfoot. Good morning, Mrs. <laughs> Probably didn't see me. <laughs> Wasn't wearing her bifocals. <laughs> hey, look at that big car parked up there. Green town and country. Chrysler. Must belong to some wealthy out-of-towner. Probably a salesman for Hat a Call. <laughs> hey, you! I wonder who he's calling. Hey, you and the green galoshes. Green galoshes? Ooh, that's me. <laughs> uh, were you calling me, sir? Yeah, come here. Uh, yes, sir. Say, I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help me out. Oh, of course. I know just about everybody in town. Who are you looking for? Well, uh, do you ever hear of a corny, small-time radio performer named Harold Hemp? Let's see, a corny, small-time... What? 
<laughs> Hi, Harold. Marvin. Marvin Hartsock. In the flesh. <laughs> hey, well, I thought you were in New York. Oh, I keep a penthouse there. Penthouse? Then I have a summer house up in Vermont. Where do you spend your summers? Well, I have a tent in the backyard. <laughs> Army surplus. Yeah. Well, I had to come out this way to attend a big stockholders meeting. Thought oh. I'd drop in and take a look at the old burg. Oh, well, Marvin, you've certainly changed. You haven't. You still look like a frightened porcupine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you look pretty prosperous, Marvin. Gabardine overcoat. Guess you've done pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Made it on the curb, Harold. The curb? Oh, well, I guess if we wait there long enough, something will come along. <laughs> yeah, I'm still the same old Harold Marvin. Yeah, same old jokes, too. <laughs> I'd like to kick in his sidewall tires. <laughs> Harold, how can you stand it living in this one-horse town? What do you do for excitement around here? Excitement? Well, every Wednesday night we have bingo at the Bijou. <laughs> Last week we had the giant jackpot, $7.40. <laughs> Oh, Harold, why don't you shake yourself loose and take a crack at the big town? Who knows? You might get into television. Well... I, uh, I don't suppose you have television in Melrose Springs. Well, we have the same thing. Old movies. <laughs> uh, well, I guess you'll always be a hick, Harold. <laughs> I despise people with funny laughs. Well, I'm driving back to New York tomorrow. If you change your mind, want to go with me, just give me a buzz. I'm at the Antler Hotel. Buffalo Suite. Oh, oh yeah. Well, thank you very much, Marvin, but I don't... Uh, so long. Bingo at the Bijou. <laughs> yeah, big city smart aleck. Think I'll go home and cut his picture out of my annual... Felt fine I ran into Heart Sock, the billy goat. Now I feel like a failure. No, I'm not. I've got the kind of success I want. Friends, a lot of loyal fans, a charge account at gallon camps. <laughs> and everybody loves my voice. Hello, Harold! Oop, Doc and his horse and buggy. Oh, silver moon. <laughs> Yeah, it's a one-horse town, all right. And what a horse. <laughs> Say, Sinatra, I was just talking to one of your radio fans. She said she likes your singing better than Perry Como. She does? Well, who is she, Doc? My horse, Silver Moon. <laughs> Silver Moon. Some fan. <laughs> What's, uh, what's that, Silver Moon? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, isn't that sweet, Harold? She wants you to autograph her hay bag. <laughs> hay bag. Wonder if I have any two-legged fans. Well, howdy, boy. Oh, hello, Pete. Oh, uh, hello, Marshall. Hi, Harold. How's Easy O Pincher today? <laughs> Another comic. Oh, say, we heard your radio program down at the jail this morning, Harold. Really made my prisoners feel good. It did? Yep. They said if that's what it's like on the outside, they'd rather stay on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pete. Yep, they'd rather be laughing on the inside than crying on the outside. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, even Silver Moon is laughing at me. If Marvin is right, I am a failure. Well, I'll see you later, hey, Oh, Harold! Oh, what's the matter? Oh, we didn't mean to hurt your feelings, boy. Uh, it's all right. After all, what am I? Just a small-time, corny radio performer. What? Why, Harold, you're the most popular man in Melrose Springs. You sure are, and your program is wonderful. Well... And we're proud to be your friend, boy. Ah. Uh... And, and so is Silver Moon, aren't you, girl? <laughs> well... Gosh, Silver Moon's licking my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's got a fountain pen? I will autograph her hay bag. <sighs> Good old Pete and Doc. But friends like that, who wants to go to New York? 
Well, I think I'll drop in to the Dancing Academy and see if Theodora's in. She wouldn't want to go away and leave Theodora. Well, pretty door chimes. <laughs> yeah, she must be in the ballroom. Theodora! Who is it? It's Haroldy Waroldy. I'm coming, warming. You're coming, warming. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. They think I'll act like I am going to New York. Get her to kiss me goodbye. <laughs> Hello, Harold. How's my little cinnamon roll? Cinnamon roll. Well, I do feel kind of spicy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Theodora. Yes? There's something I have to tell you. Well, Harold, you sound so serious. What's the matter? Theodora, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm thinking of going to New York. You're going to New York? Yeah, I'm just wasting my talents here in Melrose Springs. You mean you'd go away and leave your little dancing teacher here all alone? Well, I might. Oh, Harold, I might never see you again. <laughs> She's putty in my hands. <laughs> Theodora, guess you better give me something to remember you by. Something I can treasure. All right. I give you a pair of my old castanets. Y oop. <laughs> That wasn't quite what I had in mind. But Theodora, what do people usually do when they're saying goodbye forever? Oh, they kiss. She got it. <laughs> Theodora, let's sit here on the piano bench and pretend we're saying goodbye at the station. The train's just pulling out. You give me a goodbye kiss. Well, all righty. <laughs> Theodora. Yes? I miss that train. Let's keep kissing till the next one pulls in. Harold. <laughs> You're wonderful, Theodora. I'll never forget you. Me, 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 me. You're as sweet as the red rose in June, dear. I love you, adore you, I do. Each night through love land We'd wander, sweetheart Move closer Telling love stories anew Out of a blue sky A dark cloud came rolling Breaking my heart in two Don't leave me alone I love only you You're the one rose that's left in my heart You think so? Mm-hmm. Theodora, how about kissing me goodbye again? Harold, are you really going to New York? Of course not, but it's sure fun saying goodbye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, Station KHJP. I'll connect you. Well, hello, Gloria. Oh, hello, Harold. What's the matter now? Gee, you look cute in lipstick. Uh, uh, lipstick? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was playing a little game with Theodora, Gloria. I told her I was going to New York, and she kissed me goodbye. Say, I wonder if that would work with my dear boss, Stanley Peabody. You want him to kiss you? Yeah, no. <laughs> he thought I was going to leave. He might get scared and give me a raise. Certainly worked with Theodora. But Theodora and Stanley are different. You said it. <laughs> well, I think I'll go in and see Stanley right now. See you later, Gloria. Okay. Good luck, Harold. Yeah. I'll bet this will work. Stanley wouldn't take any chances on losing a valuable man like me. Wonder if I can get my raise retroactive to last Saturday. Come in. Oh, it's you, Hemp. Yes, sir. Stanley, I've had an offer to Hemp, get... Don't stand so close to my desk. 
You're breathing on my nameplate. If... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a sneaky fellow. Stanley, Silence. I... Silence. I'm drinking my yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like water running out of a dishwasher. <laughs> there. Now, what is it, Ham? Well, Stanley, I just came in to tell you I'm thinking of going to New York. What? What would you do in New York? Well, I'm sort of wasting my talents here in Melrose Springs. I might become a big star back there. Oh. You know, I'd look pretty handsome on television. I see. Well, I could probably get a contract for $50,000 a year. $50,000? Yeah. Of course, I hate to leave you, Stanley. So if you want to persuade me to stay by giving me a raise, say, four and a half dollars a week. <laughs> What's the matter? $50,000 a year. How ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd look handsome on television. <laughs> Why, I've seen kinescopes better looking than you. <laughs> That's an insult. Now, look here, Stanley. You know what I ought to do? I ought to walk right out of here. I ought to go to New York and leave you flat. All right, Hemp. I hope you have a nice trip. Huh? And when you get there, drop me a postcard. But, Stanley... Goodbye, Hemp. I'm sure you'll make a big splash in New York. Big splash? I feel more like a little drip. <laughs> For the second act of our story, Honest Herald, in just a moment. Some swell music making and a good stiff fight are on the docket for CBS listeners later this evening. Tony Arden will be on the Bing Crosby show with some of her very special kind of singing, and she'll be joined on Bing's guest list by three outstanding popular musicians, Louis Armstrong, Jack T. Garden, and Joe Venuti. Later, Russ Hodges' blow-by-blow account of the fight between light heavyweights Bob Murphy and Henry Brim in Detroit will be heard on most of these same CBS stations. And now, back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, the best laid plans of mice and Honest Harold sometimes go wrong. When Harold threatened he was going to New York, he thought his boss, Stanley Peabody, would give him a raise. I sure did. Instead, Stanley has practically pushed him on the train. The double-crosser. Harold would like to ask for his job back, but he has his pride. I sure do. Now, what am I going to do? Say, if my fans found out Stanley was going to let me go, I bet they'd insist he keep me here. I could drop a little hint to old Doc Yak Yak. He'd spread the word. Probably gallop around town on his horse like Paul Revere. <laughs> One if by land, two if by sea. I'll have Stanley up a tree. <laughs> yeah, just wait till Doc hears I might go to New York. He'll take it awfully hard. Better bring it up kind of easy. I hate to see a grown man cry. Oh, well, hello, Harold. Well, hello, Doc. Sit down, old friend. Old friend. Hope he's got a handkerchief. This will be a big blow to him. <laughs> Doc, what would you say if I told you I was going to New York? Why, that's a wonderful idea. Huh? Yeah, when you get back there, Harold, be sure to look up my old friend Hector Rumpelmeyer. But, Doc... Hector and I were classmates at veterinarian college, canine tech. Yep. <laughs> you like him, Harold. Doc, I thought you'd Just be... Just tell him you know Doc Yancey's old classmate. He'll remember I used to sit right behind him in distemper 1A. Oh! <laughs> Heaven's sake, Doc, don't you care? I'll be all alone in New York. Well, that's why I want you to look up Hector. He'll introduce you around. He knows every Airedale in town. <laughs> Doc! Oh, he'll show you a good time, Harold. He'll take you to all the dog shows. Oh, they ought to put you in a dog show. Oh, I'm not eligible, Harold. I lost my pedigree papers. Oh, you lost your mind, too. Goodbye. <laughs> Was certainly a big help. Well, I'll drop in and see Pete. I bet he'll want me to stay. Well, hi, Harold. Pete, brace yourself. I've got some bad news. What's that, boy? I might leave Melrose Springs and go to New York. And I ain't that a doozy. But 
I think I'm going to have to do something about that boy. Yeah, I knew I could count on Pete. You mean you're going to stop me from going to New York? Well, no, I'm going to have to transfer your bicycle registration. <laughs> but Pete... Hey, first, I'll have to fill out a form. Oh, for Pete... Yeah, here it is. Transfer of bicycle registration outside the state. You don't understand, Pete. I may leave Melrose Springs and never come back. Date of return may never come back. Let me write that down. <laughs> Pete, I thought you might want to go down and see Stanley. What do I want to see him for? It's your bicycle. I don't care two cents about my bicycle. Value of bicycle, two cents. <laughs> Let me write that down. Uh, what make bicycle is it, Harold? It's a double doozy. It's a double doozy. What are you? Pete, without a doubt, you're the most bungling, inefficient, irritating, exasperating... Not so fast, boy. <laughs> Let me write that down. At the bottom, put jackass. Goodbye. <laughs> friends I've got. I went to New York, they'd never miss me. It's like I'm going to have to go now. I've told everybody. How am I going to break the news to mother? Dear little mother, she'll be brokenhearted. Is that you, Harold? Yes, mother. Hello, son. Hello, mother. Mother, I don't know how to tell you this, but, well, it looks like I'll have to go to New York. I know all about it, Harold. Dr. Yancey just phoned. He did? Yes, and I think it's wonderful. Huh? It'll be a grand opportunity for you. But, Mother... I'm sure you love New York, Harold. Grant's tomb, the Woolworth building, the Bowery. East side, west side, all around the town. Mother... Oh, and you'll have such fun seeing all the new shows. Sarah Bernhardt, Francis X. Bushman, Weber and Fields. Weber and Fields? Mother, you must have been in New York when it still belonged to the Indians. Oh, but you love the Bowery. East side, west side, all around the town. Uh. Oh, see you later, Mother. I'm going to my room. <sighs> mother, too. Guess I'll have to go now. Uh, I'll sit down. <sighs> Look out the window. Probably the last time. Never thought my life would turn out this way. I'll probably be a big failure in New York. I can just see myself there. Gosh, broke and hungry. Been in New York three months. Lucky I got this job as pie checker at the automat. <laughs> Wonder what everybody is doing back in Melrose Springs. Uh-oh, here comes the pies. Blackberry, gooseberry, blueberry, boysenberry, corned beef hash. Oop, how'd that get in there? <laughs> What a job for a hungry man, checking pies. Hey, nobody's looking. I think I'll eat one. Just reach out there and grab one. <laughs> there. Now I'll eat it real fast. <laughs> yeah, ha. I caught you, Hemp. Oop. Did you just eat one of those pies? Who? Me? Yes, you. Come on now, confess. Why did you eat that pie? I was just trying to tell if it was blackberry or blueberry. You see, I'm colorblind. <laughs> Hemp, you're fired. What? Turn in your pie tins and go. <laughs> After that, I won't tell him it was blueberry. Uh, out of a job again. What am I going to do? I've already pawned my moose button. <laughs> hey, that fellow over there looks like old Doc Yancey from back home. Doc! Doc, old friend! Were you speaking to me, bub? Say, aren't you Doc Yancey, the fellow who loves horses? I hate horses. I just lost $50 at the track. <laughs> Pardon me. Gee, people are unfriendly here. Wish I could borrow enough money to get back to Melrose Springs. Who's that? Getting out of that Chrysler. Marvin Hartsock. Marvin! Marvin! Who are you? I'm Harold Hemp. I went to high school with you. Remember me? The frightened porcupine? <laughs> Never saw you before in my life. But Marvin... Officer, this derelict is bothering me. You're sure and Begora, what's going on here? Uh, say, aren't you Pete? Sure and Begora, what's that? Aren't you Pete from Melrose Springs? Me from Melrose Springs? Sure and Begora ain't that a doozy. <laughs> officer, will you see that this man is locked up? I sure will, Sure and Begora. Come along, you. But, officer, don't arrest me. Please don't arrest me. Please. Please. Officer, let go. Stop shaking Harold. me. Harold. Harold, wake mm -hmm. up. Zeef. What you for? Oh, hello, Mother. Am I still in Melrose Springs? Of course. Oh, thank goodness. 
Harold, Dr. Yancey and Peter are here to see you. They've come to say goodbye. Oh, tell them I'll be right out, Mother. All right. Well, this is it. Gosh, I don't want to go to New York. I don't want to be a pie checker at the automat. <laughs> well, might as well say goodbye to the fellas. Hello, Harold. Howdy, boy. Hello, fellas. Harold, eh... Uh... Pete and I got your little, uh, going away present. Going away? Yeah, a genuine cowhide suitcase. Oh, thank you, fellas. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you make the presentation speech, Pete. Oh, sure. I ain't no Calvin Coolidge, you make it. <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> Harold, we just want to say to you that we'll be thinking of you when you're far away from your friend. And that goes for me, too, boy. Thanks. We know you'll be a, a big success. And I... Oh, I, I can't go through with this, Pete. I, we don't really want you to go, Harold. What? We sure don't, Harold. But, fellas, today you both acted like... Oh, we were just putting on, boy. Sure, we thought it meant your career, and we didn't want to stand in your way. Gee, fellas, I don't want to go to New York. I want to stay right here with you. I'm awfully glad you're going to stay, Harold. I was just pretending to. Well, that's wonderful. You're all wonderful. Well, so long, old friend. Yeah, goodbye, pal. Goodbye, fellas. Great fellas. Yes, <laughs> yes, they are, Harold. My only problem now is getting my job back at the radio station. Well, I don't think you'll have to worry about that, son. What? Come in. Well, Stanley. Hello, Hemp. Good afternoon, Mrs. Hemp. Good afternoon. Uh, Hemp, I hope you've changed your mind about going to New York. Huh? Well, the most amazing thing happened this afternoon. I received over a hundred telephone calls demanding that you stay at the station. A hundred calls? Yes, all from women. So, Hemp, if you'd consider coming back. Well, all right, Stanley. Wouldn't want to disappoint all my women fans. Good. You know, it's a funny thing. Mm -hmm. Every one of those women who called had a nasal voice. Na na well, goodbye. Yeah, uh, goodbye. Mother, sounds to me like those hundred phone calls to save my job were made by one woman with a nasal voice. <laughs> Wonder who she is. I don't know, Harold. There are a lot of colds going around now. Mother. <laughs> Mother, you're wonderful. <laughs> you have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Tyler McVeigh, Mari Alden, Olin Soleil, and Farley Bayer. And featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman MacDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Yeah. CBS vivacious Sunday night star Eve Arden will leave her Our Miss Brooks classroom to star in a different kind of role on Suspense tomorrow evening. You'll find Our Lady Eve is a best-dressed woman out for the kill in her suspense drama, and it's one of her best dramatic roles in a long time. Also on CBS tomorrow evening, Raymond Massey will be heard on the Hallmark Playhouse as an overage military man who makes good. We cordially invite you to be listening tomorrow evening when on most of these same CBS stations, Eve Arden stars on Suspense in The Well-Dressed Corpse and Raymond Massey stars in The Hallmark Playhouse and Old Soldier Never Dies. Now stay tuned for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where Edward R. Murrow and Hear It Now comes to you on Friday evenings. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.